Blue County, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Face facts, what up, what up? Real fans, real talk.com. The Arthur Diamond trip young and intern time for the white and black fans. Agent to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats Man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand. Sports, gossip, all the hot topics. Real fans, real talk.com. Got it. They got the hottest bloggers. It's Jeremy Linhart. We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first. I'm talking about the latest. I'm talking about the greatest. Go check out the art. Cost. Even tell a neighbor, tell him Bobby sent ya. From spring to winter, tune in should be the only thing on your agenda. Certified coach, son, you know what I'm about, sir. Real fans, real talk.com. I'm out, boy. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Hello everyone, welcome to another live episode of Real Fans Real Talk. I'm Mark the Statman Skevich. We got another great show lined up for you tonight. A lot of interesting sports topics to talk about. A hell of a football weekend. NBA season is upon us starting tonight. World Series in full effect, but we'll get it all into that in a little bit. First, let me introduce my co-host. First, the one and only Trip Young. What's going on, Trip? Oh man, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's so good to be back. First of all, let me uh, let me shout out Baby B, wifey for life, because uh, she took home her 11th title uh, this past weekend. But it's NBA season is among us, amongst us, and tonight is the night. And um, since it's NBA season, myself and, and, and Sean Fonte, we got together and we wanted to give you a little gift, that man. But let me introduce Sean Fonte, and he's going to give you the gift, all right? Sad to say that uh, over the weekend, uh, we had a loss. My Cowboys lost. <laughs> Cowgirls. <laughs> and uh, the Little Giants won. But uh, without further ado, I don't want to put long this too much longer, you know, uh, so, Stat Man, this is for you. We got tired of you wearing that bib. <sighs> it's a LeBron thing. You wouldn't understand. <laughs> you would not understand, Stat Man. Can we, can we do it? Hold on. Cause I, I, I don't need it. I don't need it. Why are you putting this thing on? I need the camera to get a nice shot of the words. Because you really just wouldn't understand, Stat Man. It is a LeBron thing. Space right it's now. just for the NBA. It's, hey, they're playing tonight at 8 o'clock. So after we go off the air, Stat Man, this is just for you. And you can wait. You want to get a close-up. Can, can the fans at home see Stat Man? Right. It's a LeBron thing. You, you know you wouldn't understand. <laughs> so, so now you do understand... <laughs> you will not understand it's in a bad day, baby. Let the folks out there understand why they have to put on this oh, stupid shirt. Um, we, do, we do a segment on the show called Shot for Shot where we ask a series of questions. If you lose Shot for Shot the following week, you have to wear a team apparel of a team that you hate, which includes sometimes the Boston Red Sox, even though I'm a die-hard Yankee uh, fan. And in this case, um, <laughs> president of the LeBron James. Hate club. <laughs> but I guess you wouldn't understand. It doesn't say that I like him. It's a LeBron thing. I hate LeBron James. You wouldn't you understand. Know, you wouldn't know, understand. Oh man, it's a beautiful thing, man. So, so we don't even, we want to go. Let's get, let's let him put it. Let's just let's have it all. Let's get a nice close up on him. Get over there. Let's not have him stand up and just show the 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 show we don't like that. It's a new season. We were going to talk three feet this year. And it's a LeBron thing. And you wouldn't understand, Stan, man. But it looks good on you. I'm, I'm glad to see you taking it in stride, brother. Appreciate it, man. Now we can get on with the show. It's definitely a LeBron thing. 
All right. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can do the show anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in protest. This Mbappe is now like the face of the world. You've been talking like, yo, this is the mother. I mean, you, you follow one of my peers who have much money in the budget, so you're going to get you that T-shirt. There you go. You know, <laughs> right there, it's like, man, take it away. All right, so last night, before we get into the Giants and the New York sports and everything else that's going on, of an exciting down-to-the-wire finish on Monday Night Football between the St. Louis Rams and the Seattle Seahawks. And somebody forgot to tell the Rams that it was supposed to be a blowout because they went in there and, uh, you know, my, myself, Trip Young, face facts on the radio show, which is every Sunday, 7.30, realfansrealtalk.com, made our predictions, mm -hmm. and nobody expected it to be a close game like that. And, um, you know, so, you know what, what they should have done is the, the Matt Stafford movements. When yeah. you're the one you're hiring, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they, they, they couldn't get it done. They elected to pass there. They haven't been able to score a rushing touchdown all season. Uh, they've been struggling. They could have one more yard was all it took for, for the Rams to pull off a hell of an upset. Mm -hmm. it, it just wasn't happening. But what does this say for the Seattle Seahawks, which was supposed to be you know, we're seeing this with the Denver Broncos. Everyone thought that the Denver Broncos were untouchable. Next thing you know, they lose to Indianapolis. And now, you know, Seattle, without, without, without St. Louis even having their, uh, their, their star quarterback, well, I shouldn't say star, but their starting. Franchise, <laughs> starting. franchise starting yeah. quarterback in, in, in Sam Bradford. Well, I mean, you know what? It's, it's a division game. And... You, you know, you, you face that opponent twice a year, so a lot of times you're, you're familiar. Oh my St. Louis is home. I mean, it, it, it's the same same St. Louis team that, that tied up with the 49ers last season. You know what I mean? So I, I can understand it. The same team. Well, yeah, well, minus <laughs> minus St. Louis. Yeah, maybe that yeah. was the difference maybe in that. You know, St. Louis St. Bradford is holding them back, but no, definitely but they <laughs> they played them twice a year. So I think it's just one of those division games on the road. It, it happens. But, I mean, the most important thing is the defense, I mean, they, they, they did what they were supposed to do. They stopped them there on third and goal. They stopped them again on fourth and goal right there, you know, where, you know, a lot of teams could have, would have, would have got in, but the defense held strong, and they were able to, to get the victory. Sometimes those victories are going to be ugly, as we've seen the last two weeks with the Giants. But, hey, when you get the win, you take that W, and you keep it moving to the next week. Yeah. The Seahawks remain a one-game lead against uh, San Francisco in that division. But back to my original question to you, Sean, now is what does it say for the Seahawks? Are they still the best team in the NFC? They have technically have the best record right now in the NFC, but are they the best team? Yeah, I don't think it takes anything from them. It's, it, it definitely was a wake-up call because they, they were definitely coasting throughout the season and people expected them to blow them out the water. But it, 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 it showed the team how they can grind out games and stuff like that. So, I mean, just like with the Broncos, it was a wake-up call. So, I, I think they're still, they're still big dogs. I think they're still running things. It was more of a wake-up call than anything. So. Well, the Rams' defense definitely showed up as well. Uh, Go Golden Tate had a long... Uh, passing touchdown, but aside from that, the offense really wasn't going. Russell Wilson wasn't doing anything too impressive in, in that one, but nonetheless, it was a big shocker, and uh, not much of a shocker that the uh, your Cowgirls lost, though. Uh, you know, that, that, that really, you know, I don't know, man. I mean, Megatron really has something to prove, and he wanted to tell, <laughs> he wanted to tell Des Bryant, like, look, man, you need to sit down and know your role. And that's what he did. You know, he, he got out there, he jumped over everybody, he was marching everybody. He had a phenomenal game. I can't take anything from him or whatever. Um, I, it definitely broke my heart that they ended up giving up that game in the last uh, seconds of the game or whatever. But, I mean, that goes to show you, like, you got to put these teams away, man. Anything can happen any, any given night. Uh, the Lions were the favorite at home, uh, so we expected the Lions to win. We didn't expect the Lions to win once it came down to the fourth quarter yeah. because uh, it was a hell of a comeback that they made. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, that the Rams should have done is pulled uh, 
Matthew Stafford and do the, 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 they didn't really have the opportunity to do a fake spike with the uh, you know with the quarterback sneak diving over there. But that was a hell of a drive from Stafford, uh, a Texas native too, grew up as a Dallas Cowgirls fan. <laughs> and, yeah, I don't slip with the Cowgirls. <laughs> grew up as a Dallas Cowgirls fan and comes in and um, you know up against the team that he used to root for and he goes and gets the job done. It was a very exciting game, very exciting weekend in football. But the best part about it is that loss, and, and you know, in addition with the Eagles loss to the Giants, puts the Giants now only two games behind. That conference is crazy. I thought that the Giants were out of it. They, they, they lost the first six games. Oh, they're game. guaranteed two, maybe two or three more wins, but they're not, don't, don't, they're not get ahead of ourselves here. Saying, Listen. All season long, after every single L that they took, that I've been right with you there. That uh, is still like, not technically out of it. Uh, as crazy as it sounds, and no team has ever come back and made the playoffs after starting 0 and 5 in history. Sure. But you know, and then they end up starting 0 and 6. But at the same time, you're forgetting they have Eli Manning, who doesn't listen to what the critics say doesn't listen to what the odds are against him because he's used to being the underdog in every situation, and yet he still has two Super Bowl MVPs. That being said, the Giants still don't look that impressive, even in their two <laughs> victories. <laughs> so it's good, I mean, it is, a, it is a motivation builder for them. They still have the a lot of holes on help. defense. A lot of holes on defense <laughs> there. And... Uh, aside from that, it's it's just really not that impressive of a win. They really they didn't score a touchdown in the the victory against the Eagles. Uh, the Eagles haven't scored an offensive touchdown in two games now. They scored the touchdown that they scored against the Giants in what gave me a half a heart attack, especially <laughs> since the Philadelphia Eagles off of a botched snap on the punt. Yeah. Now you got to kick that ball out of bounds and take the safety at that point. Don't try to fall on it. You give up two points. Even if the punt, even if Weatherford fell on it on the one yard line, you're giving the Eagles the ball on the one yard line. You kick that ball out of bounds, give the team the safety, you lose the two points, your defense is playing well. I just finished saying that they haven't scored an offensive touchdown. Michael Vick wasn't playing because he's Mr. Glass and he gets hurt <laughs> by the Giants. That's just what happens. They call him Mr. Glass for a reason. Even with their bulletproof vests, he finds a way to get hurt against the Giants. <laughs> just they, they just go the, the way it happens. Uh, but back to my point, you do gotta you do gotta kick that, you know, and, and, and just take the safety in that situation. And the reason why I got a half a heart attack is because it is the Eagles. And the Eagles, I remember a few years ago, um, gave me you know a full heart attack <laughs> <laughs> that I'm still traumatized by with the uh, punt return up by three touchdowns yeah. and end up losing the game in the fourth quarter. So the fact that they were only one score away between a touchdown and two point conversion with about four minutes to go gave me a heart attack. But then of course the bad coaching of the Eagles, they decided to go for an onside kick instead of playing defense and kicking the ball deep. But you know that's what the, you know the Eagles end up doing. They end up you know well, hey, making listen, a decision. It, 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 and actually, I have to I have to give the Giants credit because at least I can say that from week to week they are showing improvement. I uh, know they didn't get you know a, a touchdown, but you know they got down the down the field you know on, on almost every possession of the game. The kicker did what he was supposed to do. He made them, them field goals, and the defense actually showed up, and they played some very good good football. You know, it should have been a shutout game. It should have ended 15 to nothing. You know, obviously it's the snap that uh, did you half hard attack. <laughs> it's that man, but. I, I, I'm liking where the Giants are going. I think the bye week is, is just in the nick of time for them. You, get, you know, get two, get two wins in, now you get some rest and start preparing for your next appointment. I, I'm liking where, where things are going for the Giants right now. I'm not even going to give them that benefit of the doubt. I feel like they really had nothing to play for with them being 1-6. So at this point, they have no point. They have no choice but to put everything out on the line or whatever. But like you said, this bye week is going to be a plus for them, um, for you guys out there in uh, Giants, Nick. 
situation, but uh, I don't know. We'll see. Dude, that conference is always is, is a toss up because what you got what the Skins are what two and five right now, and they're what two and six, and everybody else is four and four. So it's like. They like giving everybody heart attacks yeah. in, the, in the NFC East. Yeah. I can't get it. I don't know. It's, it's hard being a fan of any team in the, yeah. in the NFC East because you just don't know by from week to week what's going to happen. Everything is according to us. So we shall see. It's, it's easier to be a Giants fan than a <laughs> fan of the NFC East because, you know, none of the other teams have won since at least the 90s. And then, of course, the Eagles yeah. haven't won ever. So, so I guess I guess, I guess you can make a valid point. Can't be talking soup, maybe. <laughs> hey. And the soup is good, though, at least. I, I, I will say that. No soup for you, but, um, uh, yeah, yeah, look at all the tabs. So, <laughs> yeah, technically, yeah, even though it's still the way they retired his, his number, so I guess. Well, Michael Vick has a glass trophy case, but that's yeah, why. Wow. Exactly. So, you can't, you, you bring up stuff that doesn't count, Stan. Yeah, it was a glass trophy case, but that's why. Yeah, but yeah. just like him. <laughs> but the giant schedule, I mean, I see. But, you know, they have the Packers, they have the Seahawks, they have the Lions. Those three could be, you know, ones where they take losses. But I see them, you know, they've been able to beat the Packers before in the past. The Packers' defense is not, you know, that great. If it becomes a shootout between Aaron Rodgers and Eli Manning, Eli Manning has proven that he can get that done. And, the, you know, and the cheese sh shredder means yeah. that we've seen before in the past. Uh, the Lions are not, you know, that great in my opinion. Uh, I, I think that they can, could get a win against them. Those are the three that, I mean, the Seahawks are most likely going to take the loss. Um, but and the comeback pressure yeah, rating, I think that's going to be a, a, a game that they can win and start keep building that confidence. Rated, I think yeah. that's the main thing with the Giants right now is to continue to build on the confidence. And if you continue to get better week by week, when they get to those big games with the Packers and the Seahawks and the Lions, I think that, that the morale of the team will be at a point where, all right, now we're back in this. We still got a chance. We can make it to the playoffs. But we got to keep being focused and... and Everybody has to play well together. We can't have any botch snaps like we saw this past Sunday because you do that against the Packers, you're going to lose. You do that against the Lions, <laughs> Calvin Johnson is on that end, you're going to lose. So you, you have to be focused and everybody has to be on the A game. But even if they do lose three of their next eight, it's still possible in the NFC East to to win with a losing record at seven and nine. Yeah. So they have eight games to go. If they lose three out of the next eight, they, it's still possible for them to be in the playoffs. I mean, they play the uh, the struggling Redskins twice. The Cowgirls, which, you know, the, the Cowgirls took the first game, but the Giants are very capable of, uh, you know, especially since it's probably going to be a meaningful, more meaningful game. <laughs> you know what happened last year Listen. when the Cowgirls <laughs> played them. I and mean, it's just what they do. Whenever the pressure is on the Cowgirls, they, they seem to collapse. I mean, that's just what happens. You know, you know what it is, Sean. You know, I, 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 I don't know, man. <laughs> I, just, I just don't know. But you know what, though? It's, it's something that's telling me, Sean, I don't think that they're going to do that this year. You know? It's false hope. It's like Mets fans who come in and say this is our year every single year until about the 10th game in the season. But that's the Mets fans. Well, that, in your case, the Cowgirls, they, it's December comes around, and so then they say it's this December is going to be different, and then it never is. I, can't, I, just, so, I just can't do it. Now, now hypothetical, <laughs> let's say this. If the Giants did somehow win seven games, I think I would lose, lose my mind. <laughs> I would pull out the rest of the hair on my head. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I would lose my mind. But tw literally, right? Like, yeah, I, I would have to find you, uh, it's a giant that you wouldn't be the first teacher. <laughs> and I had to treat it like it's, uh, like we're in uh, Ohio and we have to burn that. Um, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Just don't be like the Texas fans. If you ever try to burn it, we just burn it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> don't take a half an hour to, to, to get the money. <laughs> Speaking of, of another New York team, just when you think it's safe to compliment the Jets, they turn around, they, they, last week they go and have a surprising victory against the Patriots, and you start saying, wait a minute, are the Jets for real now? <laughs> they, they got four wins, they, they have a winning record at four and they three. Got some on my and the next thing yeah. you know, like, we didn't expect them to beat the Bengals. The Bengals are playing, you know, pretty well. They're, they're in the lead in the AFC North at 6-2. They were, you know, uh, 
They were basically 5-2 and two going into it, and they were the favorite. Mm-hmm. But 49 points to 9. And the Jets defense has actually been playing really well this season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I didn't think, I, I, I thought that they would lose to the Bengals, but I didn't think they would give up 49 maybe, points to the Bengals. Maybe even 14 points I didn't think it was going to happen. Like but that. losing by 40... You know, maybe, maybe they won the high from the week before by beating the the, the Patriots as of now, so to speak. You know, yeah, and they kind of, and they kind of, I guess mentally they were in one of those places where they were like, hey, you know, we're doing our thing, our thing right now. They were like, come on, we're four and three, and and they got to know in Cincinnati, and they just pretty much smacked them. Yeah, and some records were broken in there. You had a <laughs> receiving record in there for most touchdowns in the game, and it's just. That was, uh, yeah. that was with Nevin, Nevin Jones, yeah. who, I, that, who, I, who I actually picked up on the fantasy uh, waving line. Ha-ha! I just had to scoop him up real fast because you got to, when you get, when you get a, a, a pickup like that, you got to go in real fast. Yeah, but you, you got to get him afterwards. Well, oh, yeah, I mean, I yeah. still won my game because I had yeah. Calvin Johnson, so I was in, in you know, yeah. I had no issues this week. Even I did that with even I, yeah. way, so I see the yeah. strategy. You got you to gotta, you gotta pick him up while you can, but... Um, Hey, uh, uh, real quick, since we are talking fancy, I lost by 0.7 points. <laughs> That's got to hurt. I know, and and my opponent had Seattle's defense, so if the Rams would have scored on that mm. Monday night, it really came down to the wire there. If the Rams would have scored that touchdown, it would have completed uh, – a great weekend in football because my fantasy team would have won, the Giants would have won, and every single team in the NFC East would have lost. So, it was what like, happened to me? Oh, I don't know. Know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know what? I actually I was up uh, before Monday night game as, as well. But the person I was playing they had two players from Seahawks and. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So what's two plays? Uh, they asked him, yeah, Russell Wilson. Let's say go but, but you know what? I wasn't really about worried about Russell Wilson because uh, my quarterback that I had started had more points to him. But then I forget the other guy. It was just some random other. And I was like, seriously? Uh, well, enough of fantasy oh. football. Uh, as you may have noticed, we are wearing pink on the set. It is Breast Cancer Awareness Month uh, for the month of October. Last year, we had our second annual Rolling for Results charity event at Baltimore Lanes Times Square. We want to thank Baltimore once again for sponsoring that event, where 100% of the proceeds were donated to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. The original event date was actually one year ago today, which eventually got postponed because of the tragic event of Hurricane Sandy. And we, we want to remember, uh, you know, all those over there that you know went through the troubled times and lost their lives. So we're just going to do a brief moment of silence for um, for the victims of Hurricane Sandy. All right, and uh, we do do uh, charity events every year. This year is uh, for GDS, Growth Development Services. It is for uh, for children with mental illnesses. We will keep you guys posted. Uh, just visit our website, realfansrealtalk.com, under the charities section of the page. You can also donate to previous charities that we've dealt with before. Uh, our events are always fun-filled events for a good cause, so it's definitely worth checking out. Once again, our website, realfansrealtalk.com, under the charity section of the page. We are live here on BronxNet Television. We are live every Tuesday, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on BronxNet Television. But if you're not a local Bronx resident, you can watch us live on our website, realfansrealtalk.com. Just go to RFRT Media, and on the drop-down menu, RFRT TV. You can check out the live stream as well as some of our archived episodes and our special episodes as well, which include uh, our boxing specials because we have a lot of different former champion boxers and the current WBO middleweight champion who just uh, defended his crown this past Saturday in Atlantic City, Kid Chocolate Peter Quillen. Glad to, glad to see him. Uh, Brooklyn's own. That's who likes to mention. Brooklyn. Yeah, from Trip Young. You can, you can check out the audio of that interview right on our website, realfansrealtalk.com. We have all our archived episodes of our radio show, which include that special. 
It's uh, we are normally every Sunday 7:30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. RealFansRealTalk.com, the Blog Talk Radio Network, and archived on the iTunes Store. If you want to check out our takes on the the games in football and everything else in the sports world, just make sure you check us out every Sunday and subscribe to us so that way you can get more information on our future special episodes, including uh, those with the boxes. But um, we also had that Bernard Hopkins uh, this fight, is too. True, you gotta shout out the alien. You gotta shout out the alien. You gotta shout out the alien. I'm an old man, too, so I. Hey, hey you can uh, figure this out. Hey, AARP crew, baby. I guess I'm um, well, that. Almost 49. 50 is when you get the AARP, uh, so. Hey, I'm going to go with Hey, we have AARP and still have a championship belt. And so we definitely look good mixing up with Murat. And he took the fight to Murat. From the sixth round on, he was in there. I'm talking about combinations like a young Bernard Hopkins in the ring. And I'm definitely looking forward to seeing Bernard fight again. I'm also looking forward to seeing the rap because he held his own in the ring, but it, it just it looked like Bernard was the more experienced, the more seasoned fighter. He definitely displays, displayed that throughout the fight. And, you know, he, he did what? He did what he came to do. And like I said, you know, I mentioned it earlier, I think, you know, we can get another two years out of Bernard Hopkins if he's going <laughs> to continue to, to fight like this. And then he will have the AFP. You know what's crazy? I'm, I'm thinking about that now. What are you telling yourself if you get beat up by somebody who's 50 years old? Oh, um, yeah, happy one. <laughs> That's bananas over. Hey, more power to Bernard, man. Do you think it happens? I mean, it's not, it's, it's not like you lost to Bernard Hopkins. <laughs> right. So, you know, you know what I mean? Like, you didn't lose to Joe Schmo from up the block, or like Billy Blanco from up the block. Billy Blanco. To, to one of the greatest fighters of all time, the execution of Bernard Hopkins. Uh, he's still a champion. You know, he's very smart in, the, in that ring, and, and, and you have to take that into account. So, I was slighting too much for moving to, to a 49 year old uh, man. But, you know, because it is Bernard Hopkins. Sir, you mean? Yeah. So, you know, he has to go. man. Hey, listen, it, it happens. Hey. He, he look, he, Bernard may get in the ring. I'm sure Bernard yeah. will continue, you know, in that division. I think he's going to do do well in that in that division. So, but shout out to, to Bernard Hopkins. And, of course, shout out to Kid Chocolate. We're definitely going to have him back uh, on, the, on the show once again. There was also a, uh, a heavyweight fight on the card too. Uh, Deontay Wilder fought on that card and he, uh, he, he knocked out Nikolai Fever in the fourth round and which is kind of crazy because this is his uh, 30th fight, Deontay Wilder. He has 30 victories, no losses, all 30 are knockouts and something that I thought was surprising which I didn't know was his trainer is actually another friend of, of Real Friends Real Talk, who's going to be joining us in the next uh, couple of weeks as well. Mark Bullion, another former uh, champion, champion in the welterweight division. His most famous fight will probably be against uh, Aaron Superman Davis in the Battle of the Bulls, which we spoke about. And uh, But we're looking forward to having him, Mark Bullion, come back on the show soon as well. So I thought that was pretty interesting. And uh, but shout out to uh, Deontay Wilder, another knockout. Uh, 17 of his knockouts were in the first round. He has not been past the fourth round yet in a fight. So um, I think I think promising things for him. Or maybe he can. I know uh, Tyler Klitschko is, is getting ready to run for president of Ukraine, so he's gonna have to relinquish uh, you know his belt. So maybe, you know, soon, soon come is that, is that championship shot. He definitely is deserving of a shot mm -hmm. in that division. Well, until the stat pin. Well, yeah. We know that's coming in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. That's down yeah. the road. So I, I didn't want to, you know, blow the spot check. We got to say positive. some of the secrets. I mean, yeah. we saw Dewey Bozella's story, his inspirational story. He's 52 years old. Exactly. So it's definitely going to happen. Maybe I will win it at 49 like this, huh? Brooklyn! <laughs> yeah, we started out Brooklyn, eh? Yeah, yeah, listen, my walker. <laughs> definitely, I'm, I'm, I'm all for it, Stanley. I've been, I've been waiting, you know, for you to decide that you're going to finally put the gloves back on and get into well, the no, they're, they're, they're on. They're just training, but not in the ring yet. But it will happen eventually. Mm -hmm. But, you know, before, before we get, you know, into any of that, it's, you know... 
let, let the, the fighting speech for itself down the road. Oh, your boy, your boy is, uh, is also set to get back in the ring, too. Uh, he's, he is actually tripling his load for 2014. Canelo Alvarez, after, after the four million of the he did, Canelo Alvarez is signed for three fights in 2014. Hey, I, I can't knock the hustle. Hey. You know, you gotta, you gotta get back. You can't just start taking them time and let it get to you like that you got beat up by the best pound for pound in boxing for me of it. So I commend them for, for getting back and, and taking those three fights. I'm sure James, Bo Crusher Smith, and those guys that we all met with at the Ring 10 the Young Charity Awards dinner would, would, would be pleased by that since even though they were taking fights in like with like two weeks of rest. But you know, three times a year, man, was equivalent to them when they were doing the hard back in the day. It gives us more, so, you give us something more to watch, man. Something you know, because you want to see what you're going to do now, because I think yeah. after that Mayweather fight, it put him in a whole different light. You know, a lot of people don't know about him. He's a real great fighter. He's a, he's a young guy. Yeah. He's a strong fighter or whatever. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's definitely going to be a lot for his career. He might as well cash in now. Yeah, exactly. He's got the big play fight fighter Mayweather. He's not going to get that for the next three fights. Well, if he can buy him, he probably will. But I'm looking forward to see what he's like. Well, yeah. I'd like to actually see, I know mean, they're different weight classes right now, but at some point I'm going to want to see him and Adrian Broner mm -hmm. get into the race together because happen. those are the, are the next two young boys. Well, they're both... Oh, Broner and uh, Canelo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, 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 they're different. They're not going to yeah. play. But uh, Broner and, and Canelo, those are the two young, young guys that are going to run boxing for the next 10 years. And eventually they're going to have to step into the race together. So I'm looking forward to seeing them down the road. Definitely my mind saying that. One thing I'm not looking forward to seeing is uh, this, this World Series action that's going on right now. <laughs> uh, it's just, I mean, the Ooh, fact the that the Red Sox is, is uh, we'll, talk, we'll touch on it briefly. And <laughs> when I listen to the news and whatever sports show I'm watching, I'm not pointing anyone out uh, individually, but I hear them say, you know, the Red Sox are one win away from their first World Series title since 2007. I'm like, is 2007 that long ago that you have to mention it? Like, yeah, you yeah. know, I mean, maybe another World Series title or a World Series win? What does you. that mean? First World Series yeah. win since 2007. It's not like it's the Cubs and it's been a, like over 100 years. It's so, I mean, six we might years ago. to make our trip to Boston a little bit earlier. Because we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to do something. We're gonna have to stop this. It's up to to you and me. The powers that be. Drop my phone in Boston and shut this whole thing down. Right? I don't know what we're gonna do, but we're gonna have to go out there and, and make something happen. Cause this is just getting crazy. They're up three games to two right now. Yeah, one game like away. They Ruth and try to ring back. Wow. Something is like, something I got to do. <laughs> Maybe like half Red Sox, half Yankees with the Ruth there or something. Yeah. Like to try to bring back the curse somehow. Right. You know, so something we gotta give. You know, let's let's figure something out. But we're definitely we're, we're, we're we'll be in big time. We have to push our trip a little earlier because I'm not gonna let this thing happen. I don't want to have to come back here next week and sit in front of this camera and and and, and, and admit that the Red Sox. I can't even say it right now. I'm not even yeah, gonna no, say no, it. No, I'm not no, even saying it. Without saying, I just don't feel like it's gonna happen. Six is tomorrow at 7:30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's when the Cardinals will. Win and, and then eventually we'll end up going to World Game Seven. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna like that. We're taking it like that. Yeah. And that and that's, 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 that's the matter of fact. We're not even talking about baseball. There's an opening season for, for the NBA tonight. All yes. right. We got three good games coming on the air. Two of them that really count. And that's the, the, <laughs> the Heat and the, the Bulls game and the Lakers and the Clippers tonight. Kobe will not be playing tonight. He, he's, he's not not so ready yet. And the doesn't count. You know what's <laughs> I was just messing and going for you and, and uh, Jim Gage is hurt again. All right, so I, I I don't know what's going on with that, but uh, listen, we'll 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 we'll, we'll, we'll see when we, we turn on our tubes tonight. Look, playing tonight. A, a different Chicago team now with the return of Derrick Rose, who's yeah. very happy that you know he, feeling that he made the right decision as far as not playing last season. He talked about how he was tempted playing in the playoffs and decided not to and you know I obviously all the media scrutiny that he had you know it's it probably was the right decision myself yes. myself and, and Trip Young and the rest of the panel here all agree that it was the best decision because number one 
even as talented as he is, you're putting him into right in the middle of the playoffs when they haven't played with him all year, and you're going to kind of throw things a little bit off balance, aside from the obvious fact that he could re-injure himself and then be out for another year. So over, he's obviously, so far in the preseason, he's looking phenomenal. Over 70% of retired NBA players go broke three years after after stepping away from the game. So I don't know any of none, none of these media personnel, none of these critics, commentators that think he should get back in, in into the on the court before he's ready. None of them are coming out their pockets to take care of his family and to take care of him. So if you feel like you needed to take a year and a half off to get yourself together, then by all means you're entitled to that. All right, you the one that, that, that bring the fans into them seats, and you the one that at the end of the day has to look out for yourself and look out for your family and your livelihood. So if you, if you feel like you need a good time, take it. You're young. You know, you don't want to go out there and, and stop your career because you rush back too fast because somebody said, oh, he, he shouldn't be playing, he shouldn't be doing this. Forget all that. Go back out there when you're ready to go, and right now he's ready to go. We're going to see tonight what's going on. we got two fan mail questions, both of them uh, all right, in regards to the NBA. Um, both from me and Shell, right? Two of you guys' early season picks for NBA MVP and NBA champion. <laughs> I, don't, I think you don't really have to ask myself and Sean for a thing because um, your, your T-shirt says it all. Statman, it's a LeBron thing. You wouldn't understand it, so Bill, I hope that answers your question for much. But Statman, what do you think about Bert's question? Shout out to Bert and the whole new show, by the way. I'm going with the Knicks, obviously. <laughs> Knicks going without a tape. <laughs> Um, as far as the MVP, I'm, I'm, you know, considering they changed it to the BPL award, best player in the league, and they seem to be giving it to LeBron James every year. Maybe they'll change that and bring it back to where it's supposed to be as the most valuable player. And, you know, Derrick Rose could end up winning it again but if he's playing, the, you know, like he did that season, there's a good possibility. Uh, the Bulls could have the best record in the East again because of him and the rest of the Bulls organization. But, you know, I, of course, as a diehard Nick fan, I got to go with the Knicks. And I'm just going to say, call Melo Anthony. Stay tuned to you guys, right? Hey, you guys. I'm not even mad as you stand there. Stay well, stay for this next question is specifically for you because Harry from Yonkers writes, if your favorite NBA team was not a title contender, would you want them to take the seat? and try to get Andrew Wiggins. I say that's for you because we both know the, the mix out there when they make sure shit this year. So what do you what do you say about taking the season? First of all, <laughs> what you can do man? First of all, it says if your favorite NBA team was not a title contender. Well, the reason I put it out to you because I'm just going by the, the, the fact that the mix will not be really a really team, and if you're not first, you're last. So you might as well. What do you think? So that is it. Andrew Wiggins playoffs. Then you're considered a title contender. When you finish, you know, second. Well, what, I, what, what I'm saying is, all that matters is the championship ring. If the Knicks aren't going to get a championship yeah. ring, so, should they take the season to go out? <laughs> That's my point. Uh, the, the Knicks don't count. And, like, <laughs> if you're the Bobcats, if you're the Hornets, the Pelicans, the, maybe the the Pelicans, the the Magic, even then that would make sense. But I'm just saying, if I knew my team, if I knew Big Ben in my heart, that that uh, really let me ask you a question. LeBron James, LeBron, LeBron James gets injured the first, you know, in the beginning of the season, he's out for the entire season. Okay, they still have a better chance in the mix. But go ahead. Well, <laughs> at that point, they're not a contender anymore. But go ahead. No, they they still they still need. Would you, you say that they should tank the season to get him? No, because they still be they still be a contender. Yeah, they'd they probably still, finish, they still be a contender. You know, they're probably. But I mean, you you talking about seven. something like that's like all right, if LeBron James is injured, of course, if the best player on any team gets injured, man, yeah, yeah, we're yeah, talking but, about if, if everybody is talking about tanking a season like the Knicks should tank this. Yeah, I just well, I did. Win. Yeah, well, ideally, it's, it's even if they don't win the championship, they're still a title contender. They're not even the same. They're going to make the playoffs. I know, I know, I know they're a title contender, obviously. Right. But what I'm saying is so they're, not gonna win. they're not going to win the NBA championship. So that's why I said to you, would you want them to take the season? No. Like they're not no. Gonna win. That's, that's, that no. question doesn't apply. <laughs> no. It's, it's, it's not a title contender. Because no. ideally, you still want your team to play to the best of their ability. Of course, because they can't pay. They can't pay all this money, you know. They can't pay 
or no, no, or whatever. No, 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 Shout out, shout out to her. Nah, I mean, nah, well, seriously, you know, I'm, I'm not for taking this season at all. Nah, yeah. <laughs> Even if it was the Bobcats, you play to win the you know, game. Yeah, you play the game. Even if it's the Wizards. With that, with that being said, though, no, stop me. I know it's rough for you. The real man is in the block, baby. You won't understand because you don't understand. Yeah. And you can say that. You can play the rough jersey and, uh... Hey, we do have children watching this, but yeah, whatever. I mean. It's all right, stuff, man. It's cool. You, you, plus, you didn't have to wear that again on another day, so. It's cool. I mean, it's just your own, it's your own, so. It's your own. That's cool. I'm going to try to wash the evil out of it. 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 I got to commend you on your fashion design mm-hmm. today because that shirt was amazing, bro. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, the, it's, it's about that time for another edition of Shot for Shot. The reason why I had to wear that <laughs> unbelievable, I, I don't even know what words to describe how... You wouldn't but, understand, that's the word, it's in the blood yeah, thing. Alright, so you don't understand how much it pained me to uh, have to wear that, but what we're doing here, uh, this is Shot for Shot. I ask a series of five questions, one referee, two contestants. Whoever the judge agrees with has to wear team apparel of a team that they hate, as you just witnessed. Uh, thankfully, that is off now, and uh, I will never do shot for shot again. <laughs> You're never going to play again. <laughs> or, or, or protest and, you know, figure something out. No, no type uh, of uh, red flag. What's that? Ah, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> All right, so... Without further ado, we'll start with the first question. Is David Ortiz a first ballot Hall of Famer? Challenger would be you, Tripp. Uh, if you look at his numbers, I would say yes, he should be. But he was also one of those guys that was on the list, you know, on that first list that, that beat those out the water with A-Rod and, and, and all that stuff. So... I don't think that the voters will vote him on as the as the first battle Hall of Famer. He definitely is a Hall of Famer, but I don't I don't I don't think he'll get the, the vote, so um I'm not you know what? David Ortiz is a Red Sox, you know, uh player and uh he's four time all star and all that, so he has you know, uh, two World Series championships. He's, got. he's done a lot of things, like you said. But I don't think his, his, his uh, name was brought up like some of the other guys' name was brought up. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to be different and say, yes, I think he'll probably be a first time. But I like him to miss it in the World Series. Huh? You, you know, do that kind of different thing. Different doesn't help <laughs> the situation, <laughs> especially with the Yankee fan. Uh, no, I mean, what Trip Young said with the, uh, with the steroid scandal, his name was mentioned in it. That's enough. We had absolutely no players in the Hall of Fame last year because of that, and some of the players weren't even involved. And first ballot means a lot. Like, you really, Sweet really, thing. like even yeah. Kyle Ripken didn't get 100% of the votes to be first ballot. There's some people out there that believe that he shouldn't be in. Mariano did not get 100% of the votes. I'm just saying. Well, I'm I, don't, I don't think Mariano will get 100%. He'll be the first ballot. Yeah, he'll be the first ballot. Don't be somebody there that's something to say. He should have been catching more than outfield. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or something like that. But to give uh, some stats on Ortiz now, even though this pains me uh, in the <laughs> World Series, out of 277 players who had at least 50 bats in the World Series, he leads in the highest batting average of 465, on base percentage of 556, and slugging at 814. So when it comes to the World Series, Ortiz is at its at his best. That's better than um, 277 players that played in the World Series with at least 50 at bats. So that's uh, pretty impressive there for Ortiz as much as I hate to admit it. But 
Furthermore, though, he's not a member of the 500 home run club, and he's not a member of the 3,000 hits club, and he was part of that PED scandal. Just because his name was mentioned, I think that he's not going to be in the uh, a first ballot Hall of Famer. He's going to be a Hall of Famer, just not first ballot. Uh, so the first point goes to Trip Young. Take that, Red Sox. <laughs> Hopefully, that makes Hopefully the powers of real fans real talk will prevent you from having it. <laughs> Halloween's coming up, too. Well, the Red Sox has not won since real fans real talk has been in existence. Oh, so, right. So, okay. So, yeah. we gotta, we're going to keep that. You got to believe. You got to believe. <laughs> So, next question. Should the Lakers be worried that Kobe Bryant will not be ready for the beginning of the NBA season? There's so many games in the NBA season. The first few games are really not going to matter. You know, they, they went without other pivotal players last year, and they still made the playoffs or whatever. Um, so, without Kobe not, not being out, I don't think it's a big, uh, they have anything to worry about. Yeah, I mean, actually, I, to be honest with you, I think it'll probably be better for the Lakers because it'll give some of the other guys a chance to showcase their talent, and hopefully, they can come when he come does come back, it'll have help because they'll know what each guy can can do. So, but does that mean that Kobe's gonna pass? Or gonna well, I said, I said like, hopefully, <laughs> but you know what? He might get more confidence than the other guys. Yeah, 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 so yeah, you never know. See a little spurt of that, you know, thing called passing from him before. So he doesn't like uh, football season, right? Yeah. Because how did they pass from him to Kobe Dixon? Man, it was probably one of those things. You know, you know, you know that the movie Salt and Pride. Yeah, we 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 Alright, so moving on to the next question. Uh, score is still one nothing Trip Young since they both agreed on that question, no point is awarded. Who should start for the Texans if healthy, Matt Schaub or Case Keenum? Uh, I mean, we still got to go with Matt Schaub. He's the, he's the better of the two quarterbacks. I know the fans in Texas don't want Matt Schaub, but fans a lot of times get caught up and become prisoners of the moment. Case Keenum, who, who played, did not do anything that would – Remotely say that we should keep him in, in the game and when Shab comes back. Shab is just better than, than, than Keenan. As bad as he's playing, he's still the best choice that the Texans have. Hands down. Um, I'm going to go with Case. I think, I think they, they're kind of ready to see what, what the young guy can do or whatever. Um, Matt Shab has been in there and he hasn't really been the most consistent. Um, although uh, you, you did say Case was in there for a little bit and he really didn't do too much, but they still liked something that they saw in him or whatever. And they, they, they had no choice because Shab was good. He's, he's hurt. Yeah, but they, for some, you, you know how that goes. They say, oh, uh, uh, he. Uh, we like what he did, and he did da da da, da. Anyways, but I, I think they, they, they're trying to go with the other guy, and and uh, so I, I'm going with Case. I think that they're probably trying to go with the young guy so that the fans stop burning the Shaw's <laughs> and they could, you know, basically be thankful that Shaw is back when his injury is, is over. And I got to give the point to Trip Young on that one because Shaw is the better quarterback. It's just the fans that are doing more harm than good by burning their quarterback's jersey. That doesn't help his confidence. It was, what, the second or third game of the season that they were doing that? <laughs> yeah. and it's not like they had an option to have, you know, Peyton Manning on their team or anything. So it's just... Um, it's like some fantasy. Yeah, it, it makes no sense. So um, two points for Trip Young. Let's see if um, you could sweep the rest of them there, Sean, and... Uh, and tie this one up. Do you believe Mike Mitchell's claims that Roger Goodell and the NFL target specific players for fines? Well, the whole argument with a lot of players since they, uh, they're talking about the whole targeting thing is that they're making it lower and lower. Um, and that's going to kind of go into the next uh, question. But... Uh, is he targeting players? I, he's definitely targeting certain type of players, but he's looking out for you know these players long term so they can have longevity and stuff like that. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say he is targeting. He's, he's targeting specific players because he wants these players to be a little bit more smart about the, um, their movements on the field and try to look out for their fellow uh, guy that's playing football out there so that they don't get anybody hurt. Okay. No, all right. Here's the thing. You could say that they're targeting because there's a lot of the same players that they get fine, but at the same time, it's not like they're just being fine for not doing anything. You know, I, like I, I think probably the guys that get fine the most would, would probably be Nandy Kasu, uh, was it, was it Ryan Clark? Well, I mean, you could just name a whole bunch of Steelers players. Mm-hmm. <laughs> get the whole bunch of Steelers players in there. But they're actually doing things that are fine really, so I, I can't. I can't say that they're necessarily targeting them because it's not like you know they she getting straight clean tackles and they're being fine. That would be different. So I'm gonna say no, just because the guys that I see repeatedly being fine actually are doing things that are fine worthy. So I, I, I don't I don't agree. We're gonna give the point to Sean on this one. Oh. Um, and ex- well, we had a, a play actually where Cruz uh, another half a heart attack. Uh, was, was drilled into the ground and and was injured and you know they said he was holding his shoulder so uh, you know then there was three quarters of a heart attack at that point when when they said he was holding his shoulder not even a penalty called no fine um, I think that you know even though they they are doing something wrong some players will get away with it and not get fined but because these players have done it repeatedly. Um, you know, sometimes even unintentionally, they'll be fine because of their bad reputation. I mean, Sue kicks somebody in the head. So for the remainder of his career, anytime he does anything remotely fine worthy, he's going to be fine, no Pretty questions much. asked. And you know, that's in a sense targeting. It's is it is it right? Yes, because they keep doing it. So they you know they're kind of targeting them, but you can't you can't deny the fact that you know. They're, you know, they're, they're letting some people get away with it, and the people that have done it a few times are, are being targeted for, you know, anything, even if it's not even, you know, that major, they're still going to end up getting fined. Next question. Should the NFL punish Brandon Merriweather for his comments about taking people's knees out? No, no, they're going to be targeting Brandon Merriweather now after this, this comment? Or should they be targeting him after he says something like that? Well, let's, <laughs> do you want me to write my answer? I mean, I'll, I'll answer that after you answer your question. Well, that's just one challenge. Um, no, you're the challenger. Oh, you know what I mean? Oh, okay, yeah, you're the one. Let me see, this comes to us. I think he should be, he should be, he should be punished for that. But what, so I think it's rough because what, how do you put something like that? Like, what, if you're saying, obviously, why are you talking about, you flat out saying, I'm going to tackle you in an illegal way on the field. It's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's rough because you can't really, I guess you, you can't, you can't find them just for saying, you know, you can't, you can't really punish them just for saying, you have to do it, but, now he just put a target on his back for saying that. So they can't technically I guess they can't punish him for that. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna say say no because technically he hasn't actually done anything illegal yet but say that. But I don't know, it, it's rough. But I guess I guess I guess no, because he hasn't done anything. Final yeah, answer. Yeah, final answer is no. Because he hasn't done anything that you can really punish. All he only did was say something. So yeah, I'm going to definitely agree with you on that one. I think he was just speaking his mind. A lot of these players are frustrated because people are getting fined or whatever, but they have to remember that, you know, that you saying you're going to target somebody's knees or whatever, like, come on, man, that's my life. Yeah, if, I, if you hit me with my knees, I'm going to be mad. just like, you know, and vice versa or whatever. So I, is he right? My own mess. Yeah, so, so <laughs> is he right for saying it? No. Should, 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 the, should the, the organization say something to him? Yes, but, you know, he shouldn't be fine. No. His coach, his coach needs to put him to the side and said punish him. Oh, it's a punish? No, no. Okay. Now, you do realize that he's up two to one, and that was the last question. Okay, I'm just making sure. 
I would have given the point to Trip if you disagreed anyway, because, um, and to answer your question, yes, they will be targeting him. <laughs> oh, most definitely. Most definitely. What do you think to in this case? Yeah, they they so they so punish him, no, not for words. You can't punish yeah. him for words, but they're going to punish him in the oh, sense yeah. that so any time it looks like he went for somebody's yeah. knee. When that, when that looks out of line and it's questionable, they're going to go and lead towards the punch. Mm -hmm. Well, especially because he got in trouble earlier this year for the head to head. Anyway, so yeah. I mean, they, 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 it's like, oh, okay, so we already knew he was doing this. So now we're like, oh, now we're going to pick on you because, you, you know, you're going you to tell us you're doing that. Now you're antagonizing us, so I don't know. As much as I, you know, wanted to get revenge on Trip Young for the um, he is the victor, uh, newly crowned champion, and we'll have, have some fun with Sean Fontaine next that, week, as he'll have to wear team apparel, the team that he hates. How, how come I don't get the, the, the championship belt ring with the winner and all that on the screen? Like, what is this? Yeah, I'm not trying to talk about the pro. The winner, the new <laughs> champion of the world! Trip, yo. That's that Cowboys, you know, uh, brotherhood we have here. You know, that's that's what that is. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, All right, hello. So, with, with that being said, Trip Young is uh, the next winner, and uh, I just want to remind you guys for the local sports out there, the Kennedy Knights and the Dewitt Clinton um, High School Football Bronx Championship is this Friday night. Uh, I'm sure local guys know, you know, who are members of either school or are familiar with it. Uh, should be a hell of a matchup, so that will be uh, this Friday night. Yeah, good game. Uh, should be a very good game. Looking forward to seeing that one. All right. Uh, we also do a segment on the show called This Day in Sports History, and I will start it off in 1960. Muhammad Ali, um, a.k.a. Cassius Clay, the first Cassius. professional... <laughs> First professional fight beats uh, Tony Hunsaker in six rounds. All right, in 1967, Danny Amex begins his NFL streak of 105 consecutive games with a reception. That's a long time. Very long time. Especially since he's only 16 years old. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. This very day in 2008, the Philadelphia Phillies defeated the Tampa Bay Rays in five games to win the World Series. The 2008 World Series, which happened to be uh, the last time the Yankees didn't make the playoffs, and that was in the original Yankee Stadium. I was in the building there. It was what the happened period. after the season after that? Yeah, the season after that, the Phillies actually played the Yankees at the new Yankee Stadium in the World Series. Yeah. They just kind of won that. That, that was where I was getting, okay. was where I was getting next, actually. Yeah. So. And the history tends to repeat itself, so considering we didn't make the playoffs this year, we'll win it next year. No, but a hell of a moment there in the original Yankees Stadium because the last game there, everyone was wearing Yankee hats. You occasionally have people showing up with Boston Red Sox, Minnesota Twins right. hats. Everyone in the stadium when I was there, only Yankee hats or no hats. But you didn't see any Red Sox hats or anything. It was all Yankee fans. Great moment in history. Glad I was able to be a part of it. Um, but that about wraps it up for this um, Oh, uh, Carlos Beltran also receives the Roberto Clemente Award. Yes, so uh, congratulations to him. Um, uh, definitely a, a great honor there. And uh, on that note, make sure you check us out. RealFansRealTalk.com is our website for upcoming radio and TV shows. Um, for Trip Young and Sean Fontaine, I'm Mark the Statman Skevich. Thank you all for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Make sure y'all go out there and support the movement. Support that research for breast cancer awareness, man. Follow suit. And y'all talk about that. Let's go known, baby. It's a LeBron thing. You wouldn't understand that. You're going to be a Derrick Rose thing tonight. You got to put him in the opening. Because he looks like he's looking at you like you. Hot top. Real fans. Real talk. Dot com. Got it. They got the hottest bloggers. It's Jeremy Linder. We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first. I'm talking about the latest. I'm talking about the greatest. Go check out the archives. Even tell a neighbor. Tell him Bobby sent ya. From spring to winter. Tune in should be the only thing on your agenda. It's certified coach, son. You know what I'm about, son. Real fans, real talk. Dot com. I'm out for Real fans. Real talk. Real fans. Real talk.